excited. So that's what I'm reading right now. It's 8 a.m. Kate's live stream is going on in the back right now. I missed the first sprint. Um, somebody kept wanting to text me last night, but I'm here. I'm here. I'm ready to get the day started. So I just finished Kate Kavanaugh's live write-in. It's her birthday write-in, so happy birthday to Kate. Okay, so I just realized I've been saying that I'll be attending By the Brooks sprints this afternoon. I actually mean Becca C. Smith's sprints. I'm attending Brooks live stream in about two days from now, two days, three days, whenever her next like evening writing sprints are. So yeah, sorry, I <laughs> should have corrected that earlier. It is one in the afternoon and I already have to reapply my lipstick because I had mac and cheese for lunch and that was very messy. <laughs> because sometimes things change so much for me that like even though it's outlined and I know what's going to happen, sometimes it's a, it goes so, Becca C. Smith's and, and Hina McCord's live stream is still going, but during the last sprint, I hit 10,000 words! Woo! Halfway point! Okay, just closing out the day here. Um, I'm really happy with all of the writing I got done during the two live streams I attended. Um, today I got a total of about 1,200 words, which is a pretty good day for me. So yeah, I'm very happy. Also, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Zara Hoffman, who also had a writing live stream. I think hers started halfway through Becca C. Smith's. So that's why I don't think I didn't see it till it was already over. But I will try to attend a live stream of yours next time. This is it was filming my conclusion for the day I found out um, my graduation. So I don't have, I graduated in May, but I don't have my cap and gown yet. And I also don't have my diploma yet. Because originally my school was supposed to reschedule, okay, so first they were supposed to reschedule our graduation for August, then it got rescheduled to December, and then just as I was filming this outro, we just found out it was, it's been rescheduled till spring of 2021. I don't even know what I'm going to be doing in spring of 20, 2021. Where am I going to be? I have no clue. Um, but luckily we are going to get our caps and gowns, I think they said next month. And then we'll be getting our diplomas sometime in September. After four years, man, I just want my stinking diploma. <laughs> Hello! So today is going to be an editing day. I'm a little bit behind on editing and putting together vlog footage, so I need to catch up on that. So that's what I'm going to be doing this morning. The new video is finishing up. I'm probably not going to uh, film this afternoon, so I might uh, sign off here. And uh, when I'm filming today, later, you'll be enjoying the new video. So yeah! Hi, so I'm sorry there really wasn't any footage yesterday. Um, yesterday was actually my first no word day, like I got no words at all yesterday. A friend wanted to call in the morning and then he also wanted to talk in the afternoon. I don't know, quarantine is doing something to all of us. Um, so I really didn't get any words in yesterday because then I spent the night time trying to finish editing my latest vlog video that I just posted as of as I'm filming this you're gonna see this later on um, but it's like the day 8 to 13 vlog that I just posted so because I didn't get any words in yesterday I'm gonna try to double down today and get some words in I don't think I'm gonna be attending any live streams just because I'm feeling a little socialed out right now so I'm just going to on my own get as much writing done as I can so I've been reading over the most recent chapter of Brains of the Operation that I posted, and I am curious about something in the story that I'm not sure how my audience really takes it. Brains of the Operation doesn't really get as many sort of comments or audience reaction that uh, some of my fanfiction stories in the past have gotten, so I honestly really can't tell. So the premise of the current arc of Brains of the Operation that is being released every Saturday is um, the First Order is intervening on a planet called Bardota, which is actually a canon planet. It appeared in a couple episodes of the Clone Wars cartoon. 
the First Order is intervening on Bardota because Bardota is not giving them the resource that is exclusive to Bardota, their Bardotan silk, which the First Order uses in their uniform production. And they also, like the First Order also has like their own like uniform factory on Bardota. And when the main characters get to the planet, they realize it's because there's a severe medicine shortage and like famine and also the um the people in the first order fact clothing fact factory are enslaved and the people are very upset and there's a growing resistance movement on the planet and even though like pate's the main character she sees some of the inequities in how the first order treats bardota she still ultimately sides with the first order uh even as like um in the in the recent chapter that was released like two weeks ago or or last week um kylo rend ends up just killing a couple of resistance fighters who pates met the previous chapter um even though they had already been captured and they didn't pose a threat and even though she talks about how that's wrong, she, like I said, she still ultimately sides with the First Order. And she is still, at least from my, how I see it, she's still making the wrong decision here. And she's, you know, she's still the bad guy. But I don't know if that's how the readers see it. Like I said, I don't really get a lot of feedback on Brains of the Operation compared to other stories where, like, people will consciously, will, like, comment on what they think of, what the events of what happens in the current chapter a lot of my comments I, I i do appreciate them but it's a lot of you know nice chapter good story blah 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 and doesn't really actually comment on what's going on so in terms of like what the audience thinks of pates as a character or if they think she's doing the right thing or not i i really don't know so the point i'm trying to get here is i hope readers aren't taking away um, the idea that Pates is making the right choice and like letting these people still be enslaved and letting the First Order continue to control the planet. And some big stuff happens in the next chapter that releases on Saturday. And I hope people don't think that I am advocating, as an author, I am advocating that this is what is like what should be done or this is okay. The Evergreen Writing Oasis! I don't know how many of their panels I'll be able to attend like live right away, but I'm definitely going to watch all of these on the replay. Tamara and a ton of other off the tubers put this together and it looked like it was like a ton of work, so congratulations to them! Okay, so I need to really get better at remembering to film outros, so it is the next day. As you saw, I just attended the opening panel of the Evergreen Writing Retreat. It's a bunch of different author tubers collaborating to do like writing sprints and workshops and other events, so it's really exciting. I don't know if I'm going to attend the whole thing. Um, that's kind of a big commitment for me considering I have like job application stuff to do as well. So I'm probably going to be dipping in and out. I'm not sure if uh, the next event is with Becca C. Smith, uh, but I still like need to eat something and get ready for the day. So I might pop in maybe in the middle of that, or I might skip it and then attend the next event. We'll see. So because I didn't give you an outro last night, I got about 250 words yesterday total which is not that great. I actually am behind now on my goal, but I got about the same amount as I did yesterday, just during the opening event of the Evergreen Writing Retreat. So as long as I keep attending events and like keep doing sprints and keep doing writing, hopefully I should catch up. So I did end up skipping Becca C. Smith's panel in order to like get some lunch and get some writing into the day. I'll have to watch that on the replay. But I did really enjoy Austin's stream on health and mindfulness. Austin is actually a YouTuber who is new to me, so I'll have to check out her content. I'll continue participating in the Evergreen Writing Oasis and hopefully get a few more words in. Um, I'll link the Evergreen Writing Oasis down below. I'm not sure if there's a complete playlist, 
but if it, I can't find the playlist, I'll link the individual videos that I show in this vlog. Because I'm the worst. I am the worst. You literally just did what she said not to do. <laughs> Okay, so it's later. As you saw, about halfway through the um, Evergreen Writing Workshop, that current one I had just shown you, I switched over to By the Brooks Writing Sprints. And I got some writing sprints. I attended about half of the stream. I stayed on a little bit longer than I normally would have just to get in one more good sprint. But now I think I'm going to work out and call it a day here in terms of vlogging. I am still technically behind but only by about 20 words. So I've pretty much um, caught up to where I need to be to like be on track for completing my Camp NaNoWriMo goal in time. So like, I'm not ahead, but I'm not really behind either. I'm like right um, at the word count I need to be to like complete my goal. So I, I guess that's okay. I might get a little bit more writing done after dinner tonight, but as you can kind of see the sun starting to go down and if I f try to vlog anymore you're gonna get that really nasty nighttime lighting so in terms of vlogging I'm gonna call it a day here so I will see you guys tomorrow <laughs>